Hello. Yesterday I had a little impromptu visit to one of my very favourite bookshops, Leakey's Second Hand Bookshop in Inverness. I've been there before and made a video about it and you might want to look at that for more detail because we just had an impromptu 20 minute visit. Yes, 20 minutes in a bookshop. So obviously I'd like to go in again and be in that large open space which used to be a church hall and again to be with a well-organised space of books because the fiction for example runs immaculately from A to Z, the books are divided into different sections and upstairs is the fiction A to Z in hardback which got my attention as well. So those were the two things I prioritised and there is something about going to a bookshop unexpectedly because it wasn't the major reason to visit Inverness and I just have that sudden almost blindness of oh wait a minute uh, what books do I want to have again when you only have such a short time to look. So I think I need to start keeping a little exercise book with particular authors and books that I want to see and I would like to have. So we had a wonderful book that my husband came across and liked and is brilliant to have with us. It looks good. Who's I? Both Larson. Okay. The editor of it. Give us a quick flick through. But it's actually all of these people who have received um, Nobel prizes for specific things. So and it sort of talks about the individual creativity of the Nobel Prizes and then it actually talks about the creative places where they've come from so there's what it refers to as creative milieu, milieu. so CERN appears there, Copenhagen again, Cambridge, Paris Tokyo. so it's all of these places where it has been uh, it's actually it's a really good book quick flick through, give us an idea is it mostly science? Please? Alexander. I don't know. Certainly these are Pauline. Richard Fine. I am really tempted with this one. I like it. I think it's got something to offer both of us. It's got a typewriter. What more could you ask for? Ernest Hemingway is not a recommendation. Yeah, I think that looks interesting. Yeah, there's lots of stuff to do with that. An inner stillness dag hammer show? Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. I don't know much about him. I am so key. He's a bit discredited now, of course. Yeah. Happier times. Definitely. This is a buy. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, don't be sorry. That's fine. Okay, we take it, it becomes ours. A murder thriller and hilarious comic satire by an archetypal village police force. A surrealistic vision of eternity. The story of a tender, brief, unrequited love affair between a man and his bicycle and a chilling tale of unending guilt. The third policeman.
something that some viewers might be interested in are the prints that are there of pictures of wildlife. They seem to be as if they've been taken out of some books, I'm not sure, and framed so they're separately and individually available. But there are wonderful prints. I was intrigued to pick up Flann O'Brien, the third policeman, which was recommended to me many years ago by someone who thought I would enjoy the humour in it, so I now have it in my hand. And I'm more interested in, well I really got interested in Flann O'Brien from reading his humorous articles which were published in the Irish Times, mainly about the brother, and it was a character, and the colloquial way that people spoke was really entertaining, distinctively Irish humour. I have to admit that I was defeated by At Swim Two Birds, which I borrowed from a library, which was a mistake because it's quite a large book and it's very playful, it works in many different levels and you need to read and reread at your leisure. And doing that with a possible library fine hanging over your head just didn't work for me. So uh, it's good to have an actual book in my hand. I was also delighted to get a hardback of P.G. Woodhouse, Sam the Sudden, in one of the versions I like, which is that hardback 1970s look. Interestingly, someone has attempted a really poor version of a P.G. Woodhouse signature there and then added above lots of love in different handwriting, a different pen, a different ink, and it just as doesn't work, does it? I can't imagine Woodhouse, P.G. Woodhouse signing lots of love. I could imagine best wishes or something, a little bit more formal. But anyway, now in hardback, in my library, and read. Got it yesterday and read it, of course. It's just a couple hundred pages, it's quite short. I also treated myself to a Muriel Spark. I recently bought a second-hand copy of Girls of Slender Means, hoovered it up, read it within 24 hours, loved it, and I actually invested in a hardback this time. This is meant to be one of her best books, uh, Memento Mori, all sorts of praising comments on it, and I think it's David Lodge, if you said this is one of her best. Yeah, described by David Lodge as, quote, her first masterpiece. So that's high praise indeed. And um, I look forward to reading that. Not too bad. My husband came across Cultures of Creativity. As I said, worth reading. And all this is wonderful. All these books are short and interesting. Whereas last week, last weekend, Wolf Hall at my weekend. I'm reading it as part of a book club and I kept reading it during the weekend even though I had other things I felt I needed to do and uh, this marks where I am in the book so I've only got a hundred more pages to go and that's what a hundred pages looks like in the context of the whole book. So you can see why it's swallowed a weekend but it is compulsive writing. Hilary Mantel won awards and there's reasons for it. You start to read it and you're lost suddenly in the tutor's, tutor's world. Um, so, a delight. At the bookshop yesterday, I saw the next book, Bring Up the Bodies, in hardback. And the problem with the paperback is it's quite hefty. It's it's almost too much to hold in your hand when you're reading it. It's almost, almost at the point where you feel you need to put it on a table. And I could see the point in having a hardback copy to read. But... I had them in my hand yesterday and it would have been about £12 to buy, which is not a lot for a hardback, but I'm not sure that I will reread these and they are so huge. I mean, the amount of real estate that takes up in a bookshelf is maybe what, f five inches maybe, four, four or five inches. And then you multiply that by three books. That's a substantial amount of shelf space. So it will always be in print, I would imagine, and always be in the local library. So some of the attractive features of the, sh the bookshop for me are the spiral staircase and the fire, of course. And if there was a comfortable wing-backed book reading kind of seat, they would never get me out of the place, which is probably why they do not have any. But a real open fire and good books to read in a quiet atmosphere. 
are just wonderful. Just yeah. a great experience. The shop as you're seeing it in this video is on a Saturday at lunchtime. This is probably at one of its busiest times. So you could have this place in a quieter state even for yourself if you come to visit at another time. And at the bottom of the staircase you can see crates of the new books that are coming through and some of them I took photographs of because they just looked intriguing titles. But what a wonderful job to stand there, look through them, price them and see them coming through. Almost as good as buying them and actually taking them home. It's that joy of finding.